Hi, I'm Sarah coming to you from birdsofafeather.ca and today we've got a slip covered lampshade. I've got this fabric lampshade and it's really seen better days. I actually got it um, on clearance. It's got some dings and it's not the most attractive fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recover it. But first, I'm going to remove, if I can, this in here because we want a nice flat surface that seems to be coming off quite easily that's still pretty usable it's actually still quite attractive so I'm going to set that aside for another use or perhaps we'll even use it for this one there we're starting with a nice clean lampshade so here I have some paper rolled out and what we're going to do is make a pattern and this is a little bit deceiving. Um, a drum shade can be slightly narrower um, from top to bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ensure that I've got the correct pattern and curvature. So I'm starting here at the seam and center the pattern as best I can. Center this um, shade. Then I'm going to take this pencil and I'm going to mark the top and also the bottom as I roll the shade. So I'm going to make a mark right at the seam and then start rolling. I've got my seam allowance on my pattern and now it's ready to cut it out on the fabric. So what I've done is I folded it on half just to make sure that it's even. Got my fabric folded here and I'm just going to line it up on the fold. Take my pins. and just pin it in place. Just to recap, I've got half inch seam allowance along the top and along the bottom, and I've got an inch along the sides. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna finish off cutting around here, and we'll have our finished pattern piece. So just before I stitch this seam here, what I've done is I've just done a dry fit on the shade just to make sure that I'm not going to run into any problems. And as you can see, I've left myself with about half an inch to turn under to finish off those edges. So now that I'm satisfied with it, I'm going to take it to the iron. This is 100% cotton fabric, so I've got my iron on the cotton setting. And I'm just going to iron it just to get out any creases. Once I'm done this, I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. And that one inch seam that you saw me leave when we were doing the pattern, I'm going to create a French seam so that you can actually see it finished on the outside. Normally, you would hide the seam on a lampshade, but because I'm doing a slip cover, I want that reinforced. So I'm just going to do that little added detail to finish this off. I'm also going to turn under the seam allowance, half an inch, and iron that. So there's my half inch. Okay, I'm just going to finish that off off camera and we'll be back to sew. For this project I'm going to do what's called a flat felt seam and that's basically the seam that you see on your jeans. So
just going to sew straight. So basically what's going to happen is I will cut away this. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we're sewing it wrong sides together so that your fabric is facing out. I'm going to cut this away and then this is going to fold over and then you're going to see the seam allowance. You're going to see the seam on the outside. And that's just going to make all these edges nice and neat. Get some scissors. And I'm going to cut this about 3 eighths. Make sure you're not cutting the underside of the fabric. And this seam gets opened up. That gets folded over. And then that'll get top stitch. I'm going to press it first, it'll just make it easier. So I'll be back. So I'm ready to top stitch the flat filled seam. And I went ahead and I surged the edges on the top and bottom. And basically I'm going to top stitch those two, I've decided, because the trim, which I'm going to add to the top and bottom, is actually going to cover the stitching. So you're never going to see it and it'll make it much easier to take the slip cover on and off to switch it out with the seasons. So here we go, I've already backstitched. You should always backstitch at um, either end. Just make sure as you're doing this you don't have any of your fabric underneath the needle. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing at the top and bottom. I've already ironed this. Just come like shy of half an inch to be sure I catch it in. Go ahead and clip all the threads. As you can see, it's nice and neat, no raw edges, it's just top stitch that's going to be covered as I said with the trim. And here's our flat filled seam. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this bottom edge. So I'm going to do this off camera and when we come back I'll be able to put it over the shade, just slip it right over and we'll see how our slip cover is fitting and then we're going to finish off with the trim. Okay, so our slip cover is finished and it's the moment of truth. I've lined up the seam here and we're just going to wriggle it on. Now I should mention that there is a top and bottom to this shade. There is a slight taper so just be sure that you take note of where the top and bottom is or else you're going to have trouble getting it on. Okay, it's looking beautiful. It fits perfectly all the way around.
Now to finish this off, to put this trim in place, and this is just bias tape that um, is very easy to do with a bias tape maker. And what I'm going to use to stick it on is this high tack glue. And I'm just going to put it onto the back of the cording, let it set up, and then stick it on. Once you've attached the bias tape, just add some binder clips and let it dry in place. The binder clips are only holding the bias tape to the fabric. They aren't attached to the shade itself. Alternately, you can also take a needle and thread and stitch the bias tape onto the slip cover.